Hello everyone, we hope you're doing very well. Today we're looking at the AN APG 68 radar in the F-16C and in particular the ACM functionality of that radar. So the airborne radar can be split into two types of functionality. BVR, which is considered ranges above 10 miles, and ACM, which is considered ranges below 10 miles. Now that's an idealistic view. In reality they do cross over, but it's the way we're going to work with it today. The scope of this video is ACM modes only and we're not looking at any weapons specific symbology or weapons employment. This is purely search and track with ACM modes. First of all we're going to start by looking at our controls. So we go to here. We will be using DMS down to ensure that our fire control radar on our MFD is soy. Next we're going to use our TMS up switch to select our boresight ACM scan. TMS right here to select 30 by 20 ACM HUD scan. Down here to reject a target that we've already got locked in STT or select ACM vertical scan otherwise known as 10 by 60. Left here currently doesn't do anything. We think it's probably going to be used in later versions of the plane to select a slewable scan. That remains to be seen. And finally we will need our dogfight override switch as we'll see in a bit. Within the ACM scope of our radar we have five modes, five search and acquisition modes that we can be used. These are what we call automatic acquisition modes. They create a pattern of scan for the radar and the idea is we move a aircraft into this search pattern and it will pick them up and in all cases in these scan modes it will convert it into an STT, a single target track. There are five scan modes that we can use. One is a boresight mode. We access this via TMS up and it has a range of 20 nautical miles. Two, 30 by 20 otherwise known as HUD scan mode. We access this with TMS right and has a maximum range of 10 nautical miles. Three, vertical scan mode otherwise known as 10 by 60. Accessed via TMS down, maximum range 10 nautical miles. Fourth mode is slewable mode. This is an area where we can slew a predefined search pattern within our radar slewable limits to find a target. It's currently do not have access to this in the early access, but it's something that will be coming up and that will have a range of 10 nautical miles. Five, similar to boresight, but this is with the helmet mounted queuing system and allows us to move a boresighted scan around within our slewable limits. This is accessed via TMS up with the helmet mounted queuing system controls. Maximum range 20 miles. Auxiliary function we can have TMS down which will reject a currently locked STT target. There are two ways we can get into these ACM modes. One is via the fire control radar on the MFD. So if we just put that back to a main menu as good practice then what we've got to do is ensure first of all our fire, can radar, fire control radar is turned on there. Next we need to ensure that our MFD that we're going to be using for our fire control radar is soy. So we're going to first of all choose the fire control radar, this here, and we want to ensure that it's soy by having the box around it there. In this case it already is, but just in case it wasn't, we press DMS down to ensure it's soy. As a default, a fire control radar will be in CRM mode. For all intents and purposes, this means BVR. We can change that to ACM. Click here click ACM. We've now gone into our default ACM sub mode or scan type which is our 30 by 20 which is shown here and we've gone into a no radiation mode. This means as standard when we do this it's not radiating. The radar is turned off basically until we choose a scan type. We can choose the scan types here. We can either have 30 by 20, we can have 10 by 60, we can have boresight or back to 3020. Remember slurble is not accessible at the moment. So that's the MFD method. Now we're going to reset everything back to standard so we can show you the other methods. So back to CRM, I think it was back on 40 miles, something like that. So the other method would be dogfight override. If we didn't have time to go down into the MFD we'd press our dogfight override switch. We can tell that we've done that because we've got dogfight override displayed here. Otherwise it's done the same thing, it's put us into a base ACM mode without a search pattern engaged and we can tell that because we have no rad here. We can now choose the scan patterns again but this time instead of using this OSB we're going to use the TMS. So TMS up, this has put us into boresight scan. 
The way this works is if you see this cross here that it places down, you imagine that there is a box, create an area like I'm framing there. All of our antenna radiation is now scanning in this box. Because it's a small box, that's what allows it to scan all the way out to 20 nautical miles. The idea is I move towards a target. Once that target becomes located in the box, it will automatically convert it into an STT and we can employ weapons. So that's foresight. Spike cap. Sorry. Next, we're going to press TMS right. This is going to put in our 30 by 20. Note that there is no HUD, HUD symbology telling us this. We know it's in 30 by 20 because it does not say no rad there and we do not see any other extra symbology. In this case, it's scanning the entire HUD, essentially, for a target. Now, in reality, it's actually slightly bigger than the HUD. It's something like I'm drawing a box there, so it overlaps a little bit. But for all intents and purposes, it's going to be scanning the HUD. Because it's scanning a bigger area and it's got less concentrated radiation, then its range is only 10 miles. And the range as well, bear in mind, the range is going to be affected by things like the target speed, the target altitude, the target aspect, and whatnot. It's just how radars work. Next, we're going to press TMS down or off. This is going to select our third mode, which is 10 by 20 vertical scan. We know vertical scan is engaged because we have this line here from our boresight cross here. Now, don't be fooled into thinking it's searching where this line is. This line is purely an indicator to show which mode we're in. The reality is, is it's actually searching a mode of uh, sorry, a scan area of 60 degrees high, 10 degrees lateral, centred 23 degrees above our boreside cross here. So it's centred about there. It scans roughly down to about there, about halfway down our HUD, where I'm framing, all the way up here to 60 degrees um, uh, from the bottom of the scan zone, which is about here, like that. Now, this is commonly used in a dogfight because almost always in a dogfight, you're going to try and be positioning the hostile between your ball sight cross here and your lift vector here directly up. So that's what that type of scan mode will be for. Same as usual, it will just scan that area. The antenna will whiz about in that area there and it will lock up STT the first thing it finds. The fourth mode, slurable, is not usable right now, so we skip over that. What we do have now is ball sight helmet mounted queuing system so helmet mounted queuing system engage with this knob here turn it on what we're going to do now is use choose our bore sight scan mode so we're going to press tms up so you can see what the bore sight cross now if we move off the hud with our head tracker it doesn't work are you serious it doesn't work ah it's disappeared now this is a bug we know at the moment with early access it's not doing anything uh, the bug is that we have to press DMS up to make it appear sometimes. Uh, that bug will probably disappear, just uh, know that that is a thing. So, you can see that now when I move outside of the HUD in terms of my helmet elevation, we get the symbology. Next, we need to go through this symbology. This here is our current G. This here is our current speed in the, in the selected method that we have selected. This is our master arm status. This is our master mode, currently in dogfight. This here is the bearing and the range from bullseye to us. Flight manual is wrong. The flight manual says it's us to bullseye. It's not. Here is the magnetic heading tape showing the heading of our helmet, not of our aircraft. It's a very useful piece of kit, that is. That will be the slant range from us to any locked target. And obviously, there's no locked target at the moment. That there is our barometric altitude. This here is showing the scan zone of our bore site. So it's just like the bore site scan zone there. But if we move it around here, then you see it does that. Now note that we can go, we can move this outside of slurable limits of the radar at the moment like that. But it would only actually function within slurable limits. Slurable limits are 60 degrees left, 60 right, 60 up and 60 down with AN APG 68. So I've explained all the different modes, the different ways that we can get into those modes. We now need to just go and use it and lock some targets up and reject some targets. So stand by as I go and find some flankers. We've got a bunch of flankers conveniently in front of us. Uh, they are flying left to right to left, so they, I might actually have problems locking them, but we'll see. So we're going to do this as quick as we can. Check our fire control radar is on, which it is. We're now just going to get away from them for the moment so I don't lock them up straight away. We're now going to press dogfight mode override. It's currently in no rad. First thing we're going to do is go to boresight mode with no helmet mounted queue system, so TMS up. And we're going to go lock one of these guys up. So we're going to place one of these guys inside the scan bore sight parameters. Like I said, I may have problems locking this up because the moving right to left. That's called notching and it causes lots of problems. There it goes. It's already got him. Look. 
So you can see that we've got an STT there with this guy. Note the target box around the target in the HUD and notes the slant range, the distance here, computed by fire control radar, 4.6 nautical miles. I'm going to get him back on the HUD. Next, what I'm going to do is unlock this guy. I'm going to reject the target and I'm going to do that with TMS R. So let's do that. And we have rejected him. Next, we're going to do our next type of scan. It's going to be a little bit awkward. We are going to do a TMS right to do a 30 by 20 uh, HUD scan. So we're going to do that now. TMS right. So we're now scanning in the HUD. We're going to go and try and pick him up again. Remember, if there are multiple guys in the scannable area, it will just pick up the first one that the antenna finds. There is no prejudice here. And it's got him. Now it may take a few seconds to find him. Remember, it can't scan that zone magically. The antenna just has to whiz up and down it like that. That's how it works. And it will eventually find him. That's that. I'm going to reject that with R, um, TMS R. So it's rejected him. Notes that when it rejects him, it automatically goes into our um, vertical scan mode. So that's our vertical scan mode. In fact, I'll just show back to ball site, TMS up back into vertical scan. Now we're in vertical scan. So we're going to position him where we know our vertical scan is. We'll pretend we're dogfighting with him and see if I can get him here. Our scan zone is going to go all the way up and down. It'll take a few seconds again because remember the antenna is whizzing up and down that scan zone at the moment. And we'll eventually find him. I may have problems with his aspect at the moment. Uh, got him finally. Um, I don't know what the delay on that is, whether it's working properly at the moment or if it is purely his aspect. It could be either, so I'm not going to try and guess. But that showed getting him here in vertical scan. I'm now going to reject that now. So I'm going to pull away and I'm going to TMS R from down. That's rejected. Next, I would like to show the uh, ball, the helmet mounted. So I'm going to go ball sight on. I'm going to turn the helmet on. You would normally have the helmet on all the time, but it's just, um, I just want to show you the difference. And you can see my egg, which is not working. So I'm going to press ball sight again. So that is TMS up again. And we now have our egg. Now what I'm going to do is hover over this guy here, and I'm going to, when I'm hovering over him, I'm going to press TMS up again, and, and there we go, we've converted him into a lock. That is now um, an STT lock, and if we want to reject that, TMS down, and TMS up again, bring our egg up again. Remember, if this symbology doesn't show up, do a DMS up, it, we think it's just a bug at the moment, and get this guy here. Uh, that was TMS up, and you can see his range of 4.4 miles. And that's it, really. Reject now. Oh, you can see when we move outside of the kind of limits where we can see him, we get this guideline which guides us to where the lock is um, for obvious reasons. Right, so that shows the five different ACMOs, the different ways of getting into them, the current bug, that we, well, what we think is a bug spotted at the moment, and how we can reject the target. Next, we'll go on to employing weapons from these single target tracks, these ACM single target tracks. I hope that was useful and see you later.